Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Shetty. We have been waiting for you. <laughs> Let's see if we have a sound. Uh, hold on. I, I cannot hear you at, at the moment. moment. I, I can. I, can you hear me? Yes. We, we are, are so, so happy you are uh, with us now. And um, uh, I've been telling the audience earlier that this open lab in Stockholm, they are working with healthcare that is very expensive here. Um, the cost continues to rise, and, the, and the, the question is, could we do it cheaper and, and smarter? And um, you are an interesting example of, of that. And I know that the surgeons in your hospitals, they are working more or less around the clock. Uh, did you come straight from surgery too? Now? Sorry? Did you come straight from surgery now? Yes, yes. Yeah. I just finished one operation. Oh. And it took a uh, slightly longer time than I thought it would. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you have to, uh, you know, make sure the patient survives before coming to talk to us. <laughs> well, I know you have a presentation and some thoughts that you would like to share with us. So, please go ahead and then you and I will have a little chat afterwards. Okay. So how many minutes do you want me to speak? Can we make sure that the sound is working? Can you say something? Yeah. How many minutes uh, How many minutes you want me to speak? Uh, 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. that would be perfect. <laughs> let, me, let me time myself. Yes. <laughs> okay. I would like to start off uh, showing the slide about the hospital where I work. This is a health city uh, where I work. We have uh, 3,000 beds in this campus. The first building what you see is the heart hospital. This is created with the intention to do 60 heart surgeries every day. Currently we do about 25 to 32 heart operations every day. Uh, we would like you to understand that uh, we are 1.2 billion population and uh, we need to do about 1 to 1 1.5 million heart surgeries a year and all the heart hospitals in the country put together perform less than 120,000 heart surgeries and the rest perish gradually over a period of time. So our intention is to create a chain of heart hospital across the country. Now, people can't afford healthcare in our country because our government spends just 1% of the GDP on healthcare. So uh, we launched a health insurance around 11 years ago with a premium of 11 cents per month. And we had 1.7 million farmers paying 11 cents per month. Today we have 4 million farmers paying 22 cents per month. And in 10 years, 710,000 patients had varieties of surgeries in 400 network hospitals. And 85,000 farmers had a heart operation just by paying 11 cents per month. We have in India about 850 million mobile phone subscribers. So we are trying to in convince the government that if they can contribute 20 cents per month through the mobile phone bills, we can cover the surgical cost of 850 million Indians. This is the power of uh, numbers. Now, when this massive change happens, we need heart hospitals across the country. We have 100 towns in India with a population of half a million to one million where there is no heart hospital. They can't afford a heart hospital. So we worked with the India's largest construction company and we told them that we need to build a 300 bed super specialty heart hospital with all the infrastructure, building equipments, everything together for $6 million. And we wanted to build this hospital in six months. 
for information a hospital of this size would cost about 600 million to 1 billion pounds in US and we wanted to build it for 6 million dollar and on the left hand side you see the artist impression and on the right hand side you see the uh, hospital which is commissioned around a year ago we have done hundreds of heart surgeries and it's doing extremely well the next big thing in healthcare is going to be IT information technology is going to change the way the healthcare is delivered so we are trying to develop one uh, IT device for the entire healthcare. So the we have zeroed down on a iPad or a mobile phone. On the left hand side, you see a American cardi American physician sitting there. He has to look at the uh, desktop. Then he has to look at computer on wheel called cow. Then he has a mobile phone. Then he has a pager. They are surrounded by gadgets. So we would like entire healthcare information to be available in an iPad or an iPhone or any of such device. So we devised a tool which is called iCare which uh, replaces all the charts in the ICU. All the patient data comes there real time. It is self-intuitive. The standard US and European software requires 75 hours of training for the doctors to use it. And this software doesn't require, in five minutes, nurses can learn how to use it. And uh, we have invested heavily on technology. Every day around 12 o'clock in the afternoon, all the senior doctors, senior administrators get an SMS on their mobile phone with the previous day's revenue, expenses and the EBITDA margin. For us, looking at the profit and loss account at the end of the month is like reading a post-mortem report. Looking at it on a daily basis is a diagnostic tool. And we are also running a large number of diabetic consultation with WhatsApp. I'm not sure whether how many of you are familiar with the app called WhatsApp. So our diabetology sitting at home manages to treat patients all over the country through WhatsApp. The, uh, one of the tools we have developed is educating the spouse of the pa patient to take care of the patient after the surgery. It is called uh, uh, Care Companion Program. We developed short films of half a minute to one minute which is uploaded into their phone and they can learn how to record the blood pressure, how to record the pulse rate, how to record input output chart and do the wound dressing, everything we teach. And we have treat, now taught thousands of patient spouse to take care of the patient after the heart surgery. And this program was recognized by the national, the, the British Parliamentary Commission as one of the best patient empowerment tools. We developed a process to address the problem of bed sore or a pressure ulcer following heart operation. All over the world, the incidence of pressure ulcer following heart operation is between 8% to 40%. Just by changing the process, we have brought it down to nearly 0%. And this process is published by the American Nursing Journal. Around four years ago, we wanted to switch over to disposable gowns and drapes. And at that time, there were two multinational companies who were selling disposable gowns and drapes. They wanted us to pay them 5,000 rupees for each heart operation. We were willing to give them 2,500 rupees. They refused to come down. 
So we got hold of local entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, asked them to set up a factory to make the disposable gowns and drapes. And a company called Emeralis was born. And we told these young entrepreneurs that when their product is ready, they will have 12% of the Indian market for heart surgery. 12% of the heart surgery done in India is done by us. And we reduce the cost of the disposable gowns and drapes. Today we are buying the disposable gowns and drapes for them for 900 rupees. If we use linen, it will cost us two and a half thousand rupees. So this is the power of size and innovation in the process of delivering. Now we are trying to get African countries, Asian countries come together and build a global university for medical, nursing and paramedical education. Because next big crisis to hit this world is going to be shortage of medical manpower. Because as people live longer, the life expectancy increases, you need more and more people. And this is all I have to say. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer your questions. Yeah, there, there, there are many questions we have after this. Uh, I don't know if we could uh, enlarge the picture so we see you in the, the big picture now. Because now we see the presentation. Yes, thank you. That's nice. Yeah. So now we see, get a better look at you. Um, so I know you have 29 hospitals now around India, is it? Yes. And if we look at the Swedish healthcare, that is, is very costly. Many people would probably say that, you know, we couldn't do here what, what you've done. Do you think it would be possible? It will not be possible to do a heart operation for $1,400 in your country. Because That's the salary is higher. <laughs> yes, your cost of everything is high. And you don't need this many operations to be done. Yeah. But, but you, have, you have set up a system where your surgeons are working a lot. They're doing a massive amount of operations, so many more heart operations than a surgeon here in, in the western part of the world would, would do in a lifetime even maybe. Um, and, and is this really the way to, I mean, can you ensure the quality of the operations? As a surgeon does more operations, he gets better at it. We are all technicians. We keep on operating, we get better. We, oper we work for 12 to 14 hours every day. And we work six days a week. So we use our infrastructure for a lot many hours than your institutions. If you use your hospital infrastructure, just between 9 to 5, and th there is no way you can reduce the cost. See, in Europe, you have this work hour limitation. Your surgeons are not allowed to work for, at least in England, surgeons are not allowed to work for more than 48 hours a week. A, if a young surgeon who is undergoing his training program, if he is allowed to work only 48 hours a week, by the time he becomes an experienced surgeon, it will be the time for him to retire. <laughs> so, but do you think, uh, here, here, in, here in Sweden, we have long lines to certain surgeries. There are people queuing up. And, but if we were to adopt your way of thinking, it would also mean a huge system change. And with your experience of, of training in London maybe and so on, do you think that could be done in a Western hospital? The, uh, say it again, please. Sorry, I couldn't hear. If, yeah. um, um, yeah, now I'm losing my, my question here, but... Um, 
do you think what you, do you think what you are doing could be done in a Western hospital that you could actually get so many surgeries going that you, you wouldn't have a line of people waiting like we have here? See, the, your biggest problem is you have the money and we have no money. And when you have money in the bank, your brain stops working. So basically, if we were to look at our healthcare system with just a fresh set of eyes, we would see many things we could change? Yes, there is, there is a huge amount of wastage in healthcare. We uh, create regulations, we create policies, which were created 50 years ago, 70 years ago. It has no relevance. Things have to change. We have to look at things with a different perspective. The, uh, I'll give you an example. The, in India or in your country, uh, a nurse who assists a surgeon for a heart operation or an appendicectomy operation, the law says she should be BSc in nursing. Now the question is, is it really required for a BSc in nursing? I, uh, I'll give an, I, I uh, have a beautiful photo, a, a picture, a painting in my office. A beautiful painting of beautiful flower. Everyone entering my office, they look at the painting and they get so enamored, they ask me who the painter is. And that beautiful painting was uh, done by a trained elephant in Thailand. They train elephants to do the painting. Can't we train girls from the villages to hand over an instrument when a hernia operation or a heart operation is done? It is possible. But then regulations do not permit it. So we need to change our way of looking at things. Today technology gives so much of opportunity for us to change things. So if regulations were to change and you were to come to Stockholm and you could do what you wanted to do to transform one of our hospitals into becoming more efficient, what is the one key thing that you would begin with? I will never come to your country and do that. <laughs> <laughs> Because we, uh, this, this seminar that we're doing here, we are, we are trying to look at what others have done and, and look at what could we learn. But, but you're saying, you know, it's a regulation change and then it's just open your mind and then you just go. We are trying a similar model. I want American hospitals to change the way they run healthcare. So we built a hospital in Cayman Island which is not U.S. Uh, uh, soil, it is a different country altogether, but close enough for Americans to uh, see what can be done. The idea uh, is that if I can demonstrate to U.S. at what efficiency and what price we can operate, hopefully they will change. And if America changes, then I can convince my Indian government and Indians to change. For us in India, if we have to change, first America has to change. So I am trying to demonstrate it to Americans in near their country how it can be done. All right. So the... Yeah, please, yeah. Yes. I was gonna, just going to say thank you so much, Dr. Shetty, and uh, good luck with all, all your endeavors. Maybe we will see completely new healthcare here in Sweden too in 10 years maybe? 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the offer.